There was a lot of hatred towards Samaritans. Jews can't stand Samaritans like blacks and whites can't stand each other. Better get that hatred taken care of. If I cut you, white man, black man, Asian man, Spanish man, what color is it going to be? Hello, that's the same color that covered you in your sin and saved you. Red. Amen. Ain't no prejudice bone should be in your body. There it is. Hatred and unforgiveness done killed you. And send you to hell the second. But anyway, the Samaritan has something the priest and the Levite did not have. He had compassion. The word compassion means to move in your gut. Something moving on the inside of you or being moved by mercy from the gut. Amen. I would say Pastor Rosada has that compassion. You know, some of y'all think he's angry all the time and all that. No man can do this all this time. He's been doing it and have no compassion and no love. He done bypassed that. You know, I'm doing this to get to heaven a long time ago. <laughs> you know, 14 years of this and still living, that man has a lot of compassion. How do you get compassion? You get it by hooking up with God. Amen. You ain't got no compassion unless you hooked up with God. Amen. Amen. See, the funny thing is, I guess, Ron, I got about 10 more minutes for right? The funny thing is this, you need to understand something. There's three things God wants out of you. But we give it to everybody else and ourselves. You ready with this? God wants to be loved, needed, and accepted. Now, who in this room don't like to be loved? Who in this room don't want to be accepted? And who in this room don't like to be needed? But we give our love something that's going to take us wrong the wrong way. We accept everything that's, that's wrong in our life, and we need everything that's wrong in our life. But God said, when you turn your love toward me, and accept me, and need me more than anything else, I will bless you. Because can't nobody love you like God. Can't nobody fulfill your needs like God. And don't nobody accept you in your condition like God. Let's look at verse 34. The Holy Ghost will make you go out of your way to help somebody and feel what God feels. Now watch this. Verse 34 says, And went, and went to the him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, brought him to a hotel, and took care of him. Now watch what this God does. Wine is a symbol of the what? Blood of Jesus. Don't we take that on home with yeah. Wine is the symbol of the blood of Jesus. And what's considered medicine because of the alcohol face. Okay? Oil is a symbol of the spirit of God. Oh, Y'all ain't getting this, man. Oil is a symbol of the spirit that was used to take the pain which the wine caused to anoint the wound. So when you pour the wine in, you did what? Woo. It caused a little pain because of the alcohol. Then he smoothed it with some oil to hold it. Go smooth, y'all. I'm here to dance the oil down. I'm holding the church outside. <laughs> but he did that for the anointed womb. The spirit provides power for success. The blood provides provision for the failure. Did y'all hear that? Amen. Amen. The spirit provides power, but the blood provides what? Provisions for your failure. Because he said, I forgive you what? Past, present, and future. Amen. When you accept me. Amen. 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 Come on, we got to bring this to a close. All right, let me see what else I'm going to go here. Let's go back up to verse 25. Look at this lawyer real quick. Verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, what is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered and said, Thou love thy neighbor to God. Thou love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he what? But he, willing to justify himself, and said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? This is the attitude most of us have. You're justifying your sin. You're justifying your condition. Stop justifying it. Admit it and move on. And say, Lord, help me get it right. 
But how are you going to justify yourself with God when he sees everything? Amen. He sees a black head on a black corner on a black light. All right. Because light cuts through darkness every single time. Amen. 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 Go to Luke 23. Stop justifying. And just stand up and say, God, I think you see. <coughs> Excuse me. When you receive this food in here, how many of y'all thanking for it? Amen. Outside of this prayer. Amen. How many of you? Do you say thank you for that? Amen. Thank you for that salad. Thank you for that piece of chicken. Yes. It didn't have to come your way. Amen. You didn't have it last month. Because if you did it, you wouldn't have came to friendship. <laughs> Do you give God thanks for that? Yes. Yes. Thank him. Learn to thank the Holy Ghost for everything he provides for you. Amen. Amen. As soon as you start justifying, you just told Jesus, I crucified you again. I'm on that throne. You 
get back up there. Do you realize I had to come to the realization one day of smoking crack and reading my Bible at the same time? Yeah. Getting blasted. It may be funny, but it wasn't. Yeah. Getting high as crack. Mm -hmm. And God is still feeling me. How could you feel me, Lord? I'm smoking crack and reading your Bible. Yeah. Why are you ministering to me? Amen. Amen. Hmm. Thank God. He said, because you need to put me back on the throne and you get yeah. off the cross. You get on the cross. And when I started realizing what he meant, he said, because every time you sin against me, you crucify me again. Yeah. Every time you lit that pipe, you crucify me again. You nail me again. You put the nails in my feet. You put the nails in my side. Then you stab me in my side. Yeah. But guess what? I still love you. So start putting Jesus on the throne and you on the cross. Anybody get something out of that? Amen. 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 One more. Go to Matthew 10. We got to bring this to a close real quick. Come on. Matthew 10. I just said, I might have to jump across one. Just go to Matthew 10, verse 36. Matthew 10, 10, 36. And it says, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I just read one verse. And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. A man's foes Amen. shall be they of his own household. He that loved father, mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loved son or daughter more than me is not worthy. Hello. And take not his cross and follow after me is not what? Worthy of me. Put you on the cross. That's why Simon had the right attitude. And put Jesus on the throne. Yeah. And watch him bless you. Mm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to uh, John and we're going to close. I'm going to jump over. For those of you, there was one more verse I wanted to read. It was Luke 14, verses 27 to 35. But time's sake, we need to go. I, I got to read this. I got to close this out with this. This is, the, this is how you become a true disciple. I want John 13. This is how you become a true disciple if your love level is correct. I've been preaching over a month and a half, but it feels good to be home. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And I pray y'all got something out of it. Yeah. You know, I pray I didn't confuse you. No. You know, it's not word for debate. This is what the Spirit of God gives me. Whether you agree with me or not. Eat the meat, as we used to always say, and spit out the bone. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. All right. Amen. 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 But I thus said the Lord, let God convict me and say, go back and correct me. Believe me, he will. He always does. You need to go back and correct that. And I do. Because I will be held in a greater judgment as a preacher and a teacher of the word of God. Those of you who want to do this, make sure it's God calling you to do it. Amen. It's not easy to stand up. You're really good. It's not. John 13. Because I, I love you all. I just came in from Baltimore. And while I was there, a homeless guy went into a church, an Episcopal church, and killed the pastor, every assistant, after they had ministered to this person so long. He came in with a pistol and killed them all. And all I thought about was friendship. Why do you do it? Why they kill me? Because I'm mentally ill. We deal with mentally ill, drug addicted, homeless, ex con Because Jesus said, if you haven't fed them, if you haven't fed the homeless, visited the sick, visited them in prison, you haven't done that, then you've done that under me. But if you had done that, what you blessed them with, you've also blessed me. Amen. Amen. See, that's my greatest reward. That's what Zion's greatest reward because he's feeding the homeless, he's ministering to the sick. He let prisoners, the ex-cons come in here. Don't call you an ex-con. Because you're not that if you accept Jesus. Don't let them get your titles. But it's it kind of threw me backwards a little bit because I'm like, who's the person that these people wanted to help but he still came in and killed them? Ordained of God. Amen. God's sovereignty. Even with brother who just died, Harold. Pray for his family. But it's still God's sovereignty. Amen? 
But I had to check my love level with that. I loved it. Amen? Amen. But God sought me. That's why I understand why people say, you know, come up here, let me lay hands on you, we'll heal you. No, if it's God's will, you get healed. Yeah, right. I don't believe in all that miracle stuff. Then if you don't get healed, well, baby, you didn't have enough faith. No. I believe the same thing you believe. Well, it must have been some sin in your life. No. <laughs> God's sovereign will. Amen. Just that simple. Well, you can't live a lot longer if you stop sinning. But I guarantee you, everybody in the room, including me, do something that's against God. Amen. But do you admit Amen. it to God? Amen. 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 Took me off the page again. But John 13, so we can close this out. <laughs> I want all y'all to fall asleep on me. Verse 34 and 35, and here it is. Ready? Mm -hmm. A new commandment. See? Something new. A new commandment I give unto you. That you love. That you love one another. As I have loved you. That you also love one another. But this shall all men know. That you are what? My disciples. If you have loved. Because I can't walk away without giving that invitation to come to Christ. So, Father, those who want to pray, let them pray by following these words. Say, Lord, Lord I'm, a I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. Please. I, confess I confess with my mouth, with my mouth. the Lord Jesus. The Lord Thank you.